Did you know, just by sitting at your computer, you take 12 to 15 breaths per minute? That's thanks to the world's most powerful sponges keeping you alive. I'm talking about your lungs. At room temperature, you inhale about 25 sextillion molecules with just one breath. That's 25 followed by 21 zeros. Hmm, let's see what it's like. I'll shrink myself into Mikey the Molecule and take you on a journey inside my friend here. Okay, ah. Oh. Remind me not to do that again right after lunch. Here we are. Now you can see the dust, particles, and germs floating around. Are you ready to go into the lungs? I can enter through the nose or the mouth. Let's take the more complicated path. We'll go through the nostrils. Whoa! A field of hair! The follicles inside your nose are as close to each other as the ones on your head. The nose hairs act as security guards. They stop dust, dirt, germs, and other particles from getting into the lungs. See that shiny stuff on the edges of the hairs? It's a thin coating of mucus. Yep, its job is to keep the lining of the nose moist and trap debris that builds up on the hairs. It's kind of like a nursery for boogers. Further inside the nose, you have even tinier hairs. Those are called the cilia, and you can only see them with a microscope. Their job is to move mucus and other small particles out of the airway. Ah, finally some room! This is the Naval Academy. No wait, that's nasal cavity. Its job is to moisturize, warm, and filter the air before it reaches the lungs. In here, you also have three things called turbinate on each side. They look like hot dogs, and they too warm up and humidify the air you breathe and filter particles. I'll squeeze through these and go further. This downward slide is the throat, or pharynx. Let's move down to the larynx. Now, you see that other slide heading in the other direction? That's where your food goes. At the top of the larynx, you have a flap shaped like a leaf. That's the epiglottis. It shuts every time you swallow to prevent food from getting into your lungs. Can you see that triangle-shaped opening? Those are your vocal cords. They vibrate every time you speak and allow different strength and amounts of air to pass through. Now we're heading through the windpipe. It's as long as two golf tees placed on top of each other, but as narrow as the diameter of a quarter. Those bumpy rings that look like tunnels are made of cartilage. It's a strong, flexible tissue that supports the windpipe. Anyway, when you breathe, the windpipe lengthens and widens like a balloon. When you exhale, it goes back to its regular size. The windpipe now divides into two smaller tubes, the bronchi. One bronchus goes right and the other goes left. Oh look, the lungs! Let's see what they look like on the outside. They have a pinkish color and they're made of soft, elastic, and spongy tissue. Each of your lungs is inside a sack of tissue and it's attached to it by a thin layer of liquid, kind of like runny glue. The sac creates a smooth surface to allow your lungs to expand every time you breathe. Your lungs have a different size and shape, too. The right lung is shorter than the left because it needs to make room for your liver, but it's also broader than your left lung. On the right, you have three lobes, the upper, middle, and lower ones. On your left, you have only the upper and lower ones. There's a notch in your left lung. That's where your heart peeks through. Hello there! <laughs> Shy, huh? Right below your lungs, there's a giant muscle, the diaphragm. It acts as a resting spot for your lungs and heart. Around your lungs, you have ribs. Those act as protectors. The enclosed room your lungs live in is called the thorax. Now, let's head inside to see what's going on. The spot where the bronchus begins to enter the lung is called the helium. And once they get in, they divide even further into the lobes. It's like being inside a tree trunk that divides into millions of smaller branches. Oh, wait a sec. What's happening here? The diaphragm is expanding. Are we getting kicked out? Oh, we're safe. Now, let's take a closer look at the tiny branches. Hold me closer, tiny branches. Okay, this is where we're going. They get so tiny that we can call them bronchioles. They're smaller than a grain of sand. And at the tips of these branches, we got a collection of balloons. 
Their official name is the alveolar sacs, not to be confused with the alto sacs. At the tips of those sacs, the individual balloons are called the alveoli. That's where the gas exchange happens. Let's go inside to see what's going on. The chamber has a membrane on the outside, some epithelial cells, and on the inside, it has some liquid. Now, up until this point, I have been floating in the air, but now I'm getting my feet wet. The balloon chambers are surrounded by tiny blood vessels called the capillaries. They have very thin walls to allow oxygen molecules to squeeze through. Do you see those tiny blue spots floating in and out of the capillaries? That is carbon dioxide. It travels freely back to the lungs the same way we came in. Oh, by the way, you'll recall that the capillaries and Montagues didn't get along very well in Romeo and Juliet. True. Now that we've passed some tissue, cells, protein, and finally plasma, we need to find transportation. Inside the capillary blood vessel, there's a huge bus. It's called a red blood cell, and it's packed with iron. Almost 70% of the iron in your body is in the red blood cells. It also has 270 million compartments. Those are called the hemoglobin protein molecules, and each of them has four seats for four oxygen molecules. Once everybody gets on board, we're going for the biggest ride ever! Now we're traveling through the cardiovascular network, a ginormous collection of blood vessels that reach every cell in the body. If we were to stretch all the blood vessels end-to-end -end into a straight line, they could circle the Earth more than two times. Oh, do you hear that powerful pumping noise? That's your heart! It's the engine that pushes the oxygen throughout the body and where it needs to go. But you don't get all the oxygen you need from your lungs. The upper layer of your skin cells and the cells in the front surface of your eyes get most of the oxygen from the air. Now we're traveling to the heart and then the largest artery in the body. It's called the aorta, and it's sort of like a giant root that expands throughout the body to generate smaller roots. Then the oxygen goes to the smallest arteries and it travels to the muscles. That's where we get off. The bus allows us to detach from the seats and head over to the muscle cells. And what do we do from now on? Well, <laughs> that's another video. Bye bye